فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأصلي وأسلم على من أرسله الله رحمة للعالمين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وإن شرح في الكتاب جلباب المرأة المسلمة written by العلام الإمام المحدث محمد ناصر الدين الألباني رحمه الله We were at the point where the Sheikh رحمه الله he says ويعود الفضل the virtue goes back to في التنبه لهذا التوجيه in the way which I have directed this issue and the way in which I have looked at this matter and the way I have placed everything in its place the virtue all goes back to it all goes back to بعد الله تعالى after Allah إلى الحافظ to the great scholar الحافظ أبي الحسن ابن قطان الفاسي the virtue goes back to him رحمه الله تعالى may Allah have mercy on to him في كتابه القيم in his great book الفريد its unique virtuous great book الذي أطلعني الله عليه which Allah تبارك وتعالى allowed me to see this book of his وأنا أهيئ when I was preparing مقدمة هذه الطبعة الجديدة شيخ الباني said when I was preparing the new introduction for this book ألا وهو النظر في أحكام النظر and the book is this is the name of the book but the sheikh didn't give the full name the full name of the book is what it's called إحكام النظر في أحكام النظر بحاسة البصر that's what the book is called. So the Sheikh Rahimullah, he says, the virtue goes back to who? Who does it go back, go back to? It goes back to the Imam. Al Imam Al Hafid Abu Qattan Al Fasi Rahimullah. The virtue goes back to him. And this is exactly what the people of knowledge are like. They give credit to who it's due to. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what did he say about the believers? الَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا غْفِرْ لَنَا The believers are the ones who say, oh Allah forgive us. وَلِإِخْوَانِنَا الَّذِينَ سَبَقُونَ بِالْإِيمَانِ And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless who? The believers who have preceded us in what? Where have they preceded us? In al-Iman. They remember their virtue and the good that they have put forward. Abdul Rahman Nasir al-Saudi, what did he say? جزاهم المولى عظيم الأجر والعفو مع غفرانه والبر سجزاهم الله جزاهم المولى الإمام الشاطبي ودي سيد الإسلا إيز منظومة ودي سيد هي سيد جزا الله عنا أئمة لنا نقل القرآن عذبا وسلسلة جزا الله ما الله سبحانه وتعالى بستوه his mercy upon who جزا الله ما الله have mercy and also reward greatly who? A'imma, scholars. Who have what? Naqalu al-Qur'an. They transmitted to us the Qur'an. Adban wa salsala. Adb means what? When something is at its natural form. Untampered with. Not played with. They've sent, they brought it to us. Adban wa salsala. With its chains. And they brought us the Qur'an. As the Prophet read it. As it came from his mouth. They gave it to us. So Sheikh Al-Albani rahimahullah is from those scholars who admit the virtue and this, it gets rid of the firya. The firya which is what? Firya means the false accusation that Sheikh Al-Albani doesn't give any credit to other scholars. That he discredits other scholars, he disrespects other scholars. And then this is kidib wa iftira' ala shaykh. It's a lie upon the shaykh. And that Sheikh Nasr rahimahullah ta'ala is one of the great scholars who was known for what? 
What was he known for? He was known for respecting ihtiram al-ulama. Who is Al-Imam Al-Hafidh Abul Hassan Ibn Qattan Al-Fasi? Before we go into the author, let's talk about the book first. Okay? This book that he pointed out, what is this book that Sheikh Al-Bani read? And as it's our norms, and it's the way that we're always going to be in this book, is that whenever we come across a reference, or we come across an Imam that we haven't heard of before, what are we going to do? We will give him a little biography. But if it's a companion, if it's a companion, then generally we'll turn a blind eye. The reason is because the Sahaba should be known to all of us. The companions should be what? They should be known to us. Ibn Qattan al fasiyu ala hasbi ilmi, according to my limited, restricted knowledge, I don't know anyone who preceded him in writing a book regarding another. What does another mean? Look. I think I could say he was the first scholar, according to my knowledge, if you guys find and come across somebody who wrote it before him, then inshallah bring it to my attention. The first person I personally know, with my limited knowledge, that was the first individual who came and wrote a book on the ahkam rulings pertaining to what? The eyes. He didn't just, looking is not specifically with the eyes. He called it Ahkamun Nadar. He called it Ahkamun Nadar. Fi Ahkamin Nadar. Bihasatil Basar. That's what he called it. That's what he called the Kitab. Ahkamun Nadari. Fi Ahkamin Nadari. Bihasatil Basari. So he's talking about the, the what? It's talking about the eyes and what you see it with. And as you know, my beloved brothers and sisters, the eyes in the religion, it has been given many ahkam, many rulings revolve around the eyes. A person can be from the people of Jannah, the people of prosperity, the people of nobility, the people of righteousness, just based on their eyesight and what they look at. Didn't Allah say in the Quran, in fi khalqi samawati wal ard, wa akhtilaf al layli wal nahari la ayati li ulil al bab, al ladina yadkuruna Allah qiyaman wa qu'udan wa ala junubihim, wa yatafakaruna fi khalqi samawati wal ard. ربنا ما خلقت هذا باطلا سبحانك فقنا عذاب النار. الله says in the in في خلق السماوات the creating of the samawat and the creating of the what of the earth واختلاف الليل والنهار واختلاف الليل والنهار and the ex and the 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 the, the, the exchanging of the day to the night the night to the day. Allah says in it is what آيات. Who is it آيات in for لكن لأولي الأل the smart people, the intellectual people. And the are the ones who are يذكرون الله قياما. They what? They remember Allah. When do they remember Him? يذكرون الله قياما when they are standing. Okay? يذكرون الله قياما when they are standing, they remember Allah. وقعودا when they are sitting, they remember Allah. وعلى جنوبهم and when they are on their sides, they remember Allah. And they say, ربنا ما خلقت هذا باطلا سبحانك فقنا عذاب النار. And they say, oh Allah, all of this which we see with our eyes around us, you have not created it falsely. So what are, what are these people using their eyesight for? Something that's making them what? Righteous people, honorable people. And in the Quran here, they're, be, they're, they're being what? They have been praised. And if you look at Surah Al-Qamar, Surah, sorry, uh, Qaf, what does Allah say? أَفَلَمْ Yanburu. Did they not look at it? فَلَمْ يَنْظُرُوا Have they not looked at? Meaning, this nazar is with their eyes, but it means النَّظَرُ بِالتَّأَمُّلِ وَالتَّدَبُّرِ It's the type of what? In which the person looks, but they're looking with pondering, and they're analyzing, and they are observing it properly. أَفَلَمْ يَنْظُرُوا إِلَى السَّمَاءِ Have they not looked, have they not looked at the sama? كَيْفَ بَنَيْنَاهَا وَزَيَّنَّاهَا وَمَا لَهَا مِنْ فُرُوجِ Have they not looked at? أَفَلَمْ يَنْظُرُوا إِلَى السَّمَاءِ Did they not look at the sama? Did they not look at it? فوقهم above them. Have they not looked at it? كيف بنيناها The way we constructed it and the way we built it. وزيناها The way we beautified the sama. وما لها أن السماء does not have فروج. فروج means it doesn't have splits. I mean there's no cracks in it. It's smooth and it's nicely spreaded out. And then look at Allah says after that. والأرض مددناها 
وألقينا فيها رواسي وأنبتنا فيها من كل زوج بهيج تبصرة وذكرى لكل عبد منيب الله سيد والأرض and the earth مددناها we grounded it we spread the earth as well we spread this earth and well أرض مددناها وألقينا فيها رواسي we threw onto it mountains رواسي means what why what's the reason why well أرض مددناها وألقينا فيها رواسي The reason why Allah did it is so that the earth does not move with its people, inhabitants. The mountains are what keep the earth from having what? Earthquakes. Allah said, I place mountains on this earth. Have they not looked at this earth as well? And if you look at this Muslims, look what Allah says in another ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, أَفَلَمْ يَسِيرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ Did they not travel on this earth? And they go out on this earth, And then do, what do they do when they go on the earth? They look at كَيْفَ بَدَأَ اللَّهُ الْخَلْقِ The way Allah created, the way Allah started the creation. صحيح? You go out and what do you look for? How Allah started the what? Started the creation. Then Islam is a religion that tells us to go out and to explore and to find things and to look at things and observe it. And it's sad when the Muslims stop doing that, what happened? The Kuffar started to do it. Who started to do it? Charles Darwin did it. صح? The Kuffar did it. And he came up with his own conclusions. He came up with his what? His own conclusions. Because you've not implemented this verse of yours. And you didn't do what was needed from you. So he went. He went on the Beagle. He traveled. He looked at the creatures that he could look at. And the birds and the different types of birds. And he came, out with, he came out with his concept and his belief and his theory of natural selection. And he authored his book, The Origins, The Origins of Species. So the believers are commanded to go out and look. How did Allah create you? Observe this, look at this, analyze this. But then all of this, what does it show you? The more you see this earth, the more you see the fascination of this earth, The more, it, the more it proves there is a God, the more it proves there is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, صح? Not that it proves, the more that you see the fascination of this earth, the more you eliminate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the equation. No, it isn't the case, صح? Just because I see more fascination every day in iPhone, wow, they had this setting, I didn't know that. Okay? That doesn't mean I say, wow, there's oh, definitely Steve Jobs was not behind this. صحيح? That isn't the case. وَلِلَّهِ الْمَثَلُ الْأَعْلَى The iPhone is deficient in its... But then Allah says تَبْصِرَةً وَذِكْرَةً This looking at the Arab, looking at the Samawat is a what? تَبْصِرَة It's an insight and it's a reminder for who? لِكُلِّ عَبْدٍ مُنِيبٍ Any slave who wants to turn back to Allah والله by just looking at the earth looking at the Sama and pondering around what's around you it's a way for you to repent sometimes and it's a way for you to come back to your Creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you see Allah has all of this You ask yourself, what significance do you hold? Dude, who are you? Look at the mountain. If Allah just, if the mountain just slightly leans over you, it'll destroy you. صح? You're gone. You're finished. You're nothing. Huh? If you go to Google, uh, YouTube and sometimes watch these videos where the earth opens and then you know these cars are driving and they just get swallowed. Have you seen it? Subhanallah. And this guy who's just a whole building collapses on him. Just how weak we are and how we think we're big and strong. And then all of this is what? It's the eyes. And it's the same eye that if the person uses and they follow their desires, Allah referred to them as a haywan, an animal. Rather the worst of animals, the dog. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَاتْلُ عَلَيْهِمْ نَبَأَ الَّذِي آتَيْنَاهُ آيَاتِنَا فَانْسَلَخَ مِنْهَا فَأَتْبَعْهُ الشَّيْطَانُ فَكَانَ مِنَ الْغَاوِينَ وَلَوْ شِئْنَا لَرَفَعْنَاهُ بِهَا وَلَكِنَّهُ أَخْلَدَ إِلَى الْأَرْضِ وَاتَّبَعَ هَوَا This man was an individual who Allah gave him the book, Allah gave him knowledge, Allah made him understand the scripture. But what did he do? He turned his eye away from what he had. He turned his eye away from what was given to him. And where did he turn his eye towards? Yeah? He turned his eye to the glitters and the glamours of this dunya. That's what Allah said to the Prophet. فَلَا تَمُدَّنَّ عَيْنَيْكَ Don't open your eyes and look at in what? 
that which we have blessed them with. The, the, the people, the things that they have, the cars that they're driving, the little money that they have, the little dunya that they have. Don't open your eyes towards that, O Muhammad. Don't give that attention and, and wait like that. Sah? Allah is telling the Prophet. And then this man, what happened? He opened his eye to the dunya. He started to look at it. Then what happened? He turned away from what? What was given to him? He became from the destroyed individuals and shaitan followed him. Are you with me? Allah then says, Pay attention to this. Allah says, if we willed, we would have what? We would have raised him up. We would have given him a station and high rank. But this individual, he chose what? He chose to be down on this earth. Look at the believers, brothers and sisters. What does the believer want? The believer wants to be raised. He's reali- the believer's feelings and his concerns are the hereafter. And he's looking more towards that direction. Lakin, the one who has followed his desires, he's looking for the uh, what? He's, he's too small. He's just looking for this dunya. He wants to stay here. Allah then says, فَمَثَلُهُ كَمَثَلِ الْكَلْبِ his example is an example of a. It's the example of what? Dog. The dog is like what? In tahmil alayhi yalhat. Aw tatruku yalhat. The dog, if you take something to it and you give it water, it still has its tongue out and it's still what? If you don't give it water, it's still the same. Like, it's nothing changes. And some people are like that. When the religion is given to them, knowledge is given to them, everything is given to them, and when it's taken, they're just the same. Nothing changes them. Are we all together? So here's a powerful point, which is, this man's, ex- what made him like this is, is another. Many of you, sisters and brothers, if you look at the reason why so many things started in your life, problems that you've seen, is all because of what? Another. What you look at. Walidhalika, the hadith, which was what? Another sahmun min siham iblis. That the, uh, the eyesight is an arrow from the arrows of who? It's an arrow from the arrows of Al Iblis. Lidalika al Imam Ibn Qatan al Fasi, he saw the importance of this. Things they, they creep into your heart, but there are channels it has to go through in order to get to your heart. Sahih? Things they creep into your heart, and there are channels in which it has to take in order to get to your It has to get to your heart through these channels. What are these channels? Huh? The eyesight. The person looks at something that he should look at. Are we all together? The second is that the person listens to what they shouldn't listen to. You're listening, your ears are listening th- th- to, you're listening to things that you should not listen to. You should not listen to. <coughs> and the, the third is that the person is what? So the person is seeing things that he shouldn't see. The person is what? He's listening to what he shouldn't listen to. And the person is eating what they shouldn't eat. They shouldn't, shouldn't take in. What you eat also affects what goes inside your heart. And look at these people who drink alcohol, who smoke weed and etc. Are, uh, are they doing good things? Are they up to good? It's very embarrassing. The other day me and a group of brothers went out to eat and we saw a... It's embarrassing the things that some people do. And I'm guessing they're Muslim because they, they look Pakistani to me. So they were, they were, they were the girls and the boys, the, the things that they were doing. But in the conversation they were saying, I'm not very drunk. I'm not too drunk. So you're looking, subhanAllah. This is the reality of what the person takes in. And then after that, it affects the heart. What does it do? What does it do? It affects the heart. And the person is in a state of pain and agony. The person is suffering. He's truly suffering. He'll call you and say, I am in a state of pain. Are you with me? وَلِذَلِكَ The Prophet ﷺ said to Ali ibn Abi Talib, لا تتبع النظرة على النظر. لا تتبع النظرة على النظرة. Don't follow a look with another look. فَإِنَّ لَكَ الْأُولَى وَلَيْسَ لَكَ الْآخَرِ The first look is for you. It will be, inshallah, you won't be held account for it. But the second is what? It's against you. Lidalika, all of us here, when we first see things that are wrong, our heart, what does it do? 
the person it pushes you back. But once you do look at it again and again and again, it becomes a what? It settles into your heart. لذلك ابن القيم رحمه الله I think it's in his kitab الدَّاءُ وَالدَّوَاءُ He talks about these, 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 these things the looks the, and the calms that he brings and the mafasid that he brings and It's very sad now one of the greatest questions that people bring in and the questions that people ask they email us regarding is based on addictions of things that they watch and the reason for this is what? Again, where does it go back to? Huh? What does it go back to? It goes back to another. This person is looking at something which they shouldn't be looking at. And so this person is in a hayran discussion. And what's sad is because that thing has now made them not pray and not fast and be so lazy in their life and become like in a... They're just in a limbo, they're just going in circles and they know it, they're crying to you. When they tell you and the way they express their pain to you, subhanAllah, you, you can really realize this person is suffering. And all of this was because they did not what? They didn't get control over, over what? One thing, what was it that they didn't control? Huh? It's their eyesight. They didn't control it. And that's why the ulama gave importance to it. If you look at shuruh al-hadith, the books of hadith, if you look at their commentaries that are placed on books of hadith and the scholars, the way extensively how they went into this. If you look at the statement of Allah, before that statement of Allah, that before Allah told us to protect our private parts, what did He tell us first? He said, Lower your gaze. Don't look at what you should. You should not be looking at. And it all is that one look that you give something. Just one time. And then it leaves a mark in your heart. And then that, mark, that will then grow into your heart and grow and grow and grow and grow. And then it sometimes reaches a point where you're unable, you're, you're unable to come back from. What are you? You're unable. So brothers and sisters, um, be careful. When I was preparing this, and I was looking at it last night, I looked at the, the, uh, the pornography industry. Which percentage is highest now, the male or the female? I, I, well, I didn't look for it, but I was looking into that. But then what came to me was that one of the greatest websites, they said that the percentage of women have now grown more than ever. And they said that the f f women have now become more than the men. It was never like that before. This shows you what? There are other external factors that they've used against the Muslims. What, they have, they, what have they used against the Muslims? Other external factors. On your sh it doesn't, a, person doesn't just, a person doesn't just result to that. This is, a, this, is, this is a final conclusion. This is a final ending of somebody's situation when they result to that. Before that, it was, before that was what? It was another fishawari. It was when the, the person looking at them, looking around on the road and on the street. Be careful what you look at and what you see, look, at, look, your, look at with your eyes. Wallahi, you're going to suffer. And later you're going to be addicted to something, you're going to regret why you're addicted to it. And you can't come back from it. So look at your, protect your eyesight and what you look at. So the Sheikh gave importance to that. And inshallah ta'ala, we're going to see how he, he mentions. The Sheikh, he's known for his authorship. The great scholar, this Imam, and Imam Abu Hassan ibn Qattan al-Fasi is very well known for his writing. He's an Imam which is Kabir. He's a great Imam. He's a Hafiz. He's reached the level of Hafiz in Hadith. Rahimahullah. He has another kitab that a student of knowledge cannot let that book be absent from his library. There's a kitab called, he called it Bayan al Wahmi wal Iham, Fi Ma Waqa'a Fi Kutub al Ahkam. He has a kitab called Bayan al Wahmi wal Iham, Al Waqa'ina Fi Kutub al Ahkam. Ah, Fi Kitab al Ahkam. 
specifically he's talking about Kitab al-Hakam, I think written by Abdul Haq al-Ishbili. So he says, Al-Wahm wal-Iham fi al-Waqi'ina fi kutub al-Ahkam. What is this book? This book is basically the ahadith that have been written from the Prophet ﷺ. You know the Prophet's hadith are written in many different ways, right? Some of them, they talk about the Prophet ﷺ, how he looked. That would be the books that Shama'il al-Muhammadiyah, صح? Where you learn how the Prophet was. Was he tall? Was he short? How was he? ﷺ? What was his complexion? There's books that talk about things that you should love to do and things that you should want to stay away from, which is called At-Targhaybu. What Targhib? Targhib what Targhib means what? Yeah, hope and fear, things that you want to do and things you want to stay away from. From books like that, Imam, Imam Mundiri's Kitab, Riyadh al-Salihin, and books like that. Huh? And there are books that are like what? Rulings, thick rulings. Like Bulu al-Maram, Umdatu al-Ahkam, Al-Ahkam by Abdul Haq al-Ishbili, Al-Muntaqa by Abu al-Barakat ibn Taymiyyah's grandfather, uh, Al-Muharrar ibn Abdul Hadi, and books like that. They're Kutub al-Ahkam. This kitab written by Ibn Qattan al-Fasi, what it does is that it grades all the ahadiths in those books of ahkam. And a person will learn the way that the scholars of hadith speak about narrations and authenticate it and classify it and etc. This kitab is ajeeb. It's really ajeeb. It's so powerful that Ibn Hajar used, referenced it a lot in his Tarqis al-Habir. What did he do? He used it and he applied it in his Tarqis al-Habir. And Imam al-Shawkani used it in his Nail al-Awtar. Allahumma sta'anu ala ma tasifun. Um, great scholars, they used it. And they applied it in their work. Even the kitab that you have today, what's his name? Uh, what's it called? Minnatul Ahkam. Uh, what's it called? Minnatul Allam. Minhatul Allam. Minhatul Allam. Fi Sharh Bulug al Baram, written by Sheikh Abdullah Salah Fawzan. He really relies on this kitab. Bayan al wal Iham. Al Waqi'ina fi kitab fi kitab al Ahkam. He relies on this <coughs> when he's grading the ahadith. If you go and you see a lot of it, a lot of the times he uses this, and he of course he uses the other kitab written by Ibn Jawzi and Ibn Abd al Hadi. Rahimahullah. Let's talk about this book a bit about it because I think students of knowledge should try to buy this book written by Ibn. This one of, which is the kitab Ihkam al Nadar fi Ahkam al Nadar. This book that we're talking about, which is pertaining to the issue of looking at women or men looking at men, uh, um, women. The Sheikh, the way he wrote it, is first of all, he placed eight chapters for it, eight chapters. And the reason why he done eight chapters is because the doors of Jannah are eight. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take us to what? May Allah take us to Jannah. These are the eight chapters he believes that if a person treads on, he takes serious, it will be a, a, part, a way for him to what? To enter Jannah. He started his Rahimahullah in his chapters in which he placed the issue of the he started number one, the first chapter he starts with the issue of Ghadd al Basar. Ghadd al Basar, lowering your gaze, Amma la yahilu, in things that are not permissible for you. He talks about that. He discusses that. He also talks about he also talks about what is also permissible for you to look at? He talks about lowering your gaze from things that you're not allowed to see. He also talks about um, things that you're allowed to look at. He also speaks about What is it allowed that a person can show from their beauty? What are you, what are you allowed to show? And this is where Albani references him, by the way. Sah? And Ibn Qattan al-Fasi is of the opinion of Sheikh Nasr rahimahullah ta'ala, which is that the face and the hands is what? Is the aura according to him. Al-Hafid Ibn Qattan al-Fasi is not a what? To him the hands and the face a woman can show. Uh, and even the legs, when it comes to the issue of the legs, Ibn Qattan al-Fasi, he brings all the khwal and, uh, and then he kind of makes it seem like he's going to say that it's, it's allowed. Then he comes back and he refutes that the legs are also awrah for the women and that she has to cover her legs. He also talks about in his book, women, men looking at men. 
and in situations that men, when they look at each other, what can they see from each other? He talks about that. He talks about women looking at women and how some women take it very lightly when it comes to, and of course some men, they take it very lightly in how they dress in front of each other or they are in front of each other. Then he talks about نَظَرُ الرِّجَالِ إِنَ nisa, Men looking at women and women looking at men. And the Shaykh Rahimahullah, when it came to the matter of men looking at women and women looking at men, here is where he went. Balagha dhirwa. It's just he went off into it so much. Allahumma barik. And he really went details into this issue. He made great a'imma kibar reference that book and go back to it. The way he lays it, lays, the way he lays it out, the way he discusses these issues. And then after that, he talks about the issue of If a doctor has to see a woman's aura, how much of it can he see? What is he allowed to see? How can he see it? He talks about that issue uh, and the situations pertaining to that. The book has very strong points that I want to bring to your, your, your attention, brothers, which is that, number one, he brings all of the ayat that are needed. All of the ayat that are needed, he brings it there for you. That are connected to looking, he brings it in that book. And he places it in a very organized manner, Ibn Qattan al-Fasi rahimahullah ta'ala. And he also brings you the statement of the Mufassirin, the scholars of Tafsir, starting with the companions, of course. He starts with the companions, and then the Tabi'een, and then the A'immatul Lugha, and then he brings the Dalil, where they where they extracting the Dalil from. And he also talks about the Manatul Ahkam, where is the, uh, the word of Dalala, where is it connected to the ruling? He, he also brings the hadith in there as well. And of course when he brings the hadith, he's an imam in hadith. So he doesn't just bring the hadith. He doesn't just bring the hadith. But when he brings the hadith, he references where it's in. He brings a chain of narration. He authenticates and weakens it if it, if it needs that. He goes mufassal in that matter. Also what about the, the beautiful things about this kitab of his is that he also, the way he's encompassed and he really has brought the statement of the fuqaha. The way he has brought the statement of what? The fuqaha. The aimatul madahibs. Like al Imam Abu Hanifa, al Imam Malik, al Imam Shafi, al Imam Ahmad. He brings their statements and what they said and the aimat that follow them. He brings their statements. And then when he does bring their statements, he also strengthens and he weakens it based on his opinion and how he sees it. He does tarjih in that matter. He also brings a lot of ijma'at, consensus. He brings it. And of course, he, he's an imam in consensus. He has a whole book called Al-Iqna' Fi Masail Ijma'. There's a kitab which he authored. What did he call it? He called it Al Iqna' fi Masaili fi Masaili al Ijma' matters that have consents, that have been agreed upon, that Muslims can't come later and start to discuss it and talk about it. It's already, this is a consensus already, sorry. You just have to adhere to it. He has written a book on that. So, this book, that's the beauty that it, that it has. If a person really reads it and looks at it very well, gives it time, it, it will truly benefit from it. And that's why Al-Imam Al-Albani, rahimahullah, he praised this book. What did he call it? He called it Al-Kitab Al-Qayyim Al-Farid, الذي أطلعني الله عليه وأنا أهيئ مقدمة هذه الطبعة الجديدة ألا وهو النظر في أحكام النظر فقد تكلم فيها بعلم واسع That he spoke about this in great knowledge, he said. ونظر ثاقب He said he's Observation is very solid, Sheikh Al-Bani says this, ala kulli masaili, all of the matters that he's spoken about. Every matter that he spoke about, he spoke about it bi'ilmin wasi'in, with vast knowledge. And it's true because these imams, they were imams. He was, as Al-Imam Al-Bani, rahimahullah, if you look at the kitab, Jilbab al Mar'at al-Muslimah, page 52, everyone look. At the bottom, what does he say? At the bottom, وَصَفَهُ الذَّهَبِيُّ فِي الْأَفِي the 22nd volume, page 306, what did he say? He said, al-Qadi. So he's a Mujawid and a Qadi. 
He was an Imam in Quran as well. He was a Hafiz in Hadith. And he was also a Qadi. He was also a what? He was a Qadi, Rahimahullah. He was a judge. He took that position of being a judge, Rahimahullah. The best tabaqa for the iqna' fi masail ijma' that I have is the one which is Al-Faruq al hadithiyya li tabaqati wa nashar Ibn al-Qattam was born in the year 562 and he died in the year 628 Rahimahullah He was born He was born 500 and what? 62 and he died 600 and what? 20, 28, Rahimahullah. His name is Ali ibn Muhammad ibn Abdul Malik ibn Yahya ibn Muhammad ibn Ibrahim ibn Khaslat ibn Samaha al Fasiyu. And his kunya is Abu al Hassan. And his laqab, his nickname is Ibn Qattan, Rahimahullah, Rahmatan wa Sia. The Sheikh Rahimahullah, he was born and he was raised until the age of 20 in his land of Fas. And then he moved to Marrakesh. He went there so he can take the knowledge and the take from the scholars and the people of knowledge. And this is one thing I truly advise any one of you. When it comes to seeking knowledge, you need to travel for it. If you can't travel to your local masjid just to come to a class, you can't even leave sometimes maybe from your borough and go to another borough. If you can't really do that, are you going to seek knowledge when you go to another country? I remember some sisters said to me, Wallahi, brother, Wallahi, that we, we have problems. These sisters can't travel, like, seek knowledge. Huh? Is that what sisters suffer from? Huh? They say that. We can't, we don't have mahram. You brothers can just jump on a plane and go. Draw force. They say that a lot, right? I would only take that from you if I see you going to the local masjid and taking classes there. Huh? You, you're not doing it in your local masjid. And there are so many things going on, and you're not doing it. Then start to use as an excuse that you will take a plane and you will travel to seek knowledge. This is what, huh? It's you lying to yourself. And it's same with so many brothers as well. They will say to you, "Akhi Wallahi, I want to seek knowledge. I'm going to go. I'm just waiting for my jamia to Islamia, Medina to Munawwara." I've applied for the jamia. I'm just waiting for their response. And as soon as inshallah ta'ala they give me the green lights, I'm going to go in. I'm going to seek knowledge. Yeah, I'll tell you this in advance, for free, without no money, you're not going to seek knowledge. You sah? Not that I'm trying to hurt this person, but I'm telling them the truth. Because if you couldn't do it in your local area, if you were not taking it serious in your neighborhood, are you really going to take it serious when you go to another country where the environment is different? Where the people... No, you're not. You are truly not. And the fact that you're saying, I'm waiting for the application to come through, just shows that you're not what? You're not going to. So the person should travel. And these, this is what the ulama used to do. And of course, the Shaykh, rahimahullah, he took knowledge from his people, he took knowledge from the Ahlul Ilm of his time, and he took positions. He took what? He took position. He became a Qadi for the Dawlat al at that time that controlled it. He took control over it, and here, rahimahullah, being the Qadi, of course, meant... Qadi, by the way, when you hear Qadi, according to the previous scholars, Qadi didn't mean what we think, just a little judge. No. No. A Qadi is up there, he's like... He's like the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. He's high up there. His words go through. When, I, when you, see, you hear this person took a mansub, he took a position and he became a qadi, that means he was what? He had, he had the dunya of his time at that time. And these scholars, even though they had all of this, they were still what? They were still uh, imma kibar. And that he said about him, al-hafid al-allama. The word allama, even though it's a mu'annath, the word allama, it's a mu'annath, 
but the ta'nith, the ta'am marbuta here is what? Lil mubalagha. It's just emphasis that he was excessively knowledgeable. The same was said about Ibn Abdul Hadi, said the same about him. Ibn Umad, said Ibn Nasir Din al-Dimashq, Ibn Abdul Malik, said the same about him. Ibn Abar, said the same about him. Many scholars, they praised him, rahimahullah, rahmatan wa sa'ah. He was a person, as I said before to you, he had vast knowledge of different sciences. He's put his hand in so many sciences. And this is something I want you sisters and brothers to hear, which is that as a Muslim, you should try to learn all sciences, have a good understanding, you know, a vast knowledge of different sciences, whether it be hadith, place something on it, whether it be Arabic language, this is my lost property, whether it be Quran and sciences, give it to me, I need it, whether it be fiqh, whether it be aqidah, any mas'ala, any field of the religion, you should have it. But then after that, of course, Allah is going to give you one science that you're going to be what? That you're going to have love for, you're going to be enjoying more, you're going to be passionate about. Then of course, you can go to that science and become more in deep of that science. But that doesn't mean you sit in a gathering and somebody will say, maqtu' and you say, mm, Allah, I don't know that stuff, you know. I'm just good at what you call it, um, Quran, you know. I know different stations. Sah? Shouldn't be the case. Or you know ilm al-hadith and everything and then when it comes to the Qur'an you say, Wallallah, lean. Huh? And that's not the case as well, sah? Or you don't say, Zalik al-kitabu. And you're, you're, you're strong at hadith and you're this and that and you're authenticating a hadith or you're weakening narrations. Are you with me? You, that shouldn't be the case. That the person should have a good ground of all sciences. A good base on all sciences, but of course he can do tabahur. Tabahur means me specialize in one particular science. He has many books, rahimahullah, rahmatan wasi'a. The books that he has reached 12, 20 books uh, in fiqh, uh, three books in usul al fiqh. He wrote nine books in hadith, and he wrote in ilm al rijal. He wrote four books and other sciences and, and etc. He has written uh, four books. Rahimahullah Ta'ala. Ibn Qattan, he died. Rabi' al Awwal, he died. When the year was 628, as I said. Rahimahullah Rahmatan Wasi'ah. He died that time. And he left behind great knowledge, great time. He had many students that he took from, and that took from him as well, and Mashaykh al Ulama that he took from. And there are students that he took, that he took from. From his most famous students is, of course, his own children. He also took from Muhammad ibn Iyad ibn Muhammad ibn Iyad. He took from Abdul, Muhammad ibn Abdul Malik al Ishbili. He took from Muhammad ibn Abdullah ibn Al Abar. He took from Muhammad ibn Ali ibn Abi Bakr al Sinhaji. He also took from, uh, took from. These are all his students, sorry, by the way. Abu Abdullah al Randi. All of these are individuals. Of course, Ibn Waq, these are all his students that took knowledge from him. His teachers, on the other hand, are who? Abu Umar ibn Aath, Ahmed ibn Yazid ibn Abdul Rahman, Ahmed ibn Muhammad ibn Umar al Qaisi. He took from Muhammad ibn Abdul Rahman ibn Ali al Tajaybi. He took, uh, took from, he took knowledge from Muhammad ibn Abdullah ibn Tahir al Husseini. These are people he took knowledge from. These are his teachers, in which he learned from. His teachers, they reach. 21. 21 scholars he took knowledge. He took knowledge from. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. These are his teachers. 21 teachers that he has. Today who can put their finger up and say, I have one teacher I've learned from. Ah. Who can say two? Sahih? <laughs> we can't. We're struggling to say two. Huh? And these people, what did they have? Some of them had hundreds of teachers. Hundreds of teachers. That's how they took knowledge and they learnt. So inshallah ta'ala, we'll stop there inshallah. We will take uh, question and answers bi-idhanillahi al-kareem. Subhanakallahumma bihamdika, ashadu an la ilaha illallah, astaghfiruka tu alayhi.